Probably the most important consideration in cache design is the trade-off between speed and capacity. To help understand the impact of this trade-off, I'd like to visualize requests from the CPU to main memory like this, where the orange lines represent the requests to the CPU. We would like the cache hit rate to be high and the speed to be fast. These goals, however, are somewhat contradictory. We can have a small but fast cache and just accept that this would have a low hit rate, being only able to intercept quickly a few of the requests from the CPU. Or we could have a large cache, but this would be slow there, either because of the physical limitations like the speed of light or because of the high cost of fast hardware. So we intercept more requests from the CPU, but we aren't able to return them as quickly. What is the right trade-off? Well, it's hard to say, but fortunately we don't just have to make one choice. We can trade off side versus speed multiple times at various levels within something called the cache hierarchy. What is not in the CPU registers, we look for in an L1 cache. What's not in an L1 cache, we look in the L2 cache. On multi-core processors, there might be a, even a third level of cache. What's not there, finally we look for in main memory. Even main memory, however, we can think of as a cache for what is on disk, or we can also think about maybe main memory as a cache for what's on the file system. Notice here that the top is smaller, faster, and costlier per byte, and as we go down the hierarchy, we get things that are bigger, slower, and cheaper per byte. And if we do a good job of keeping the data that we are going to access next in the higher levels of the hierarchy, that is, if we can keep our hit rates high, then we can get the speed of the top part of the pyramid, but have the capacity and the overall cost per byte of the lower end of the pyramid.